fiber. You hear a lot of talk about getting enough fiber. And today's class is all about two categories of fiber, roughage and what I like to call smoothage. Now, are you getting enough smoothage? And do you actually know what smoothage is? Hi, I'm Mary Bourne, traditional naturopath. I love sharing natural remedies with people. And natural remedies have been around for hundreds, even thousands of years, and they work. And they work on people and sometimes pets. So true health depends on us getting number one, good nutrition, and number two, fiber. So fiber is essential to good health. Women need about 25 grams of fiber every day. Men need about 38 grams per day. And we're going to talk today about why this particular food type is important for everyone. So the average adult American only gets about 15 grams of fiber per day. And years ago, a study was done on the diets of the Hadza hunter-gatherers of Tanzania, and they found they had about 100 grams of fiber each day. Now, hunter-gatherers not only were gathering berries and things like that, they hunted, and you don't get fiber from animal protein. Uh, I mean, it may feel fibrous because you have to chew it, but it isn't uh, a fiber like uh, the essential fibers that you need. So most of their particular food fiber came from the berries and the roots and the different things that they ate. So there's basically two kinds of fiber. We call roughage is a basic crude or insoluble fiber. In other words, it doesn't break down it's made of cellulose and hemicellulose and lignin. Make, it makes plants woody or stringy. Now, this is the type of fiber we need to actually clean up and it goes to the colon. So it doesn't get digested and go through the bloodstream. Soluble fiber, or what we like to call smoothage, is mucopolysaccharides, gums, and mucilaginous fibers. So they're juicy and they're moist and they make plants have liquid or gel-like uh, texture. So let's talk a small amount about food fiber because most of this uh, class is going to be about insoluble fiber. Now, it's not water soluble, so it doesn't mix well with water. It's found in chewy plant parts like grasses, seed coatings, peelings. So when you eat an apple, the peeling is actual uh, crude fiber that helps you with your colon health. The flesh actually is the other kind, smoothage fiber, and that actually can go through the bloodstream and mop up toxins. So uh, wheat bran is another good example. Uh, bulks the stool and helps with intestinal motility. Now, if you're not a good water drinker, then you may have a problem with wheat. Uh, many times I've found that people who aren't up on their water intake, as soon as they work on getting enough of the water in their body, they can adapt to a little more wheat fiber. Now, there are some people that have a gluten problem, and so that doesn't take care of the water situation, doesn't take care of the gluten, and that's a whole nother story. So um, it basically has been likened to a broom that helps to sweep the colon clean. And if you look at this when it's bundled together, it kind of resembles a broom. Soluble fiber is 
uh, strings of sugar molecules similar to starch, but not digestible. Muco, which is mucopolysaccharides. Muco means it's water loving and poly of course means many. Saccharides are sugar. So that just breaks down that big word that everybody likes to throw around. Mucopolysaccharides, <laughs> um, expihalidocious. <laughs> so it forms a slippery, slimy, gelatin-like mass and you can see the stringiness inside the aloe and the gel that is inside this very tough leaf. Now it has to be tough because it lives in the desert. So it helps keep our stool bulky and soft and uh, serves as a food for friendly bacteria. So it's considered a prebiotic which is really important. And it's the sugars in it that make that polysaccharide work. So let's talk about aloe. And actually I will link to a video I did just recently on aloe and the importance of it and how it can moisturize and how well of a hydrating plant it is. And the importance you can uh, put this in your diet and it can have many health benefits. So we wanna make sure that people understand about the benefits of aloe, how to use it. And it's all explained quite well in uh, that video. So more examples of fruit that contain mucilage are mucopolysaccharides. I mentioned the apple and how the exterior is a good insoluble fiber where the interior is a good soluble fiber. Then we get to the seeds and the seeds actually have a benefit of their own. And when I was studying nutrition <clears throat> to get my ND, uh, they talked about the fact that each apple has the correct amount of seeds to be eaten for that apple. So a lot of people say, oh, you shouldn't eat the seeds because uh, it has things in it that can be harmful or toxic, but actually a little bit of a poison actually can help you. So, I mean, there's, there's, it's the amount that you take that can be harmful. And so a little bit actually can be cleansing. It can be beneficial. If you chew, I only buy organic apples. If you chew the seed of an organic apple, you can taste almond. Now it's an interesting thing. And these seeds have B17 in them. And so they're cancer fighting. Now there are many toxins that are given to people with cancer and um, people think that an apple seed is harmful, but I don't think it's as harmful as chemotherapy. Now pears, the, the same basic thing, but the inside of the pear actually is gritty. And so its uh, interior is more fibrous than an apple. Now, apple, when you mix an apple with grapes, for example, you can create jelly. So it's the pectin in the apple that helps to set up the jelly uh, because there isn't that much in grapes. Now, grapes have their own wonderful benefits uh, blueberries have their own benefit. So each fruit has uh, these benefits that is helpful for the body. So let's talk about the health benefits of smoothed. So let's first look at bowel health. Now it helps the bowel be regular. It's important to have this juiciness going on. Now, Yes, it goes through the bloodstream, but it 
you know, eventually everything's going to go into the bowel that is not used by the body for energy production or healing. So it can help to prevent and treat both constipation and diarrhea. It moistens the bowel and bulks the stool. It helps soften dry, hard stools, making them softer and easier to pass and binds irritating substances in diarrhea and bulks in um, to the stool to relieve watery bowel movements. Now, everybody is individual. You have to maybe take uh, a small amount in the beginning to adapt to this. Um, I think applesauce is a, a really good way to go, although it is a cooked apple, it's still going to be easier on the digestion. And then you can move to uh, raw or juice, uh, juicing apples. Uh, there are a, a lot of recipes that take a, like a green apple and blend it with carrot juice and celery juice. And that's also another way to start, but you're not getting any of the fiber. When you juice things, you're actually eliminating the fiber. So you, um, you, you basically need to know that you should add back some of the fiber. <laughs> so it also is very soothing for intestinal inflammation. It helps any type of inflammatory bowel disorder like um, irritable bowel disorder uh, or inflammatory bowel disorder, whatever you want, the IBD, <laughs> including ulcerations, Crohn's disease and colitis. Now these are very serious end results of something that has not been taken care of um, and has been basically pain medicated or some people will use some kind of acid indigestion type of thing. And they're not really addressing that their stomach is telling them, hey, I need a little help here. So it soothes the intestinal membranes like the body's own mucus secretions. Now <clears throat> we have mucus that flows through our entire body, through the lymphatic system. I also have a teaching video on the lymphatic system in my YouTube channel. So you can look for that uh, and understand how the intestinal system works, how the immune system works. Um, I have videos on all of that. So it softens stool to help hemorrhoids heal. Now, I believe that hemorrhoids are from straining. And um, you, when you bear down, you do not help the situation. What you need is, number one, more water. Number two, more fiber. And generally speaking, smoothage type of fiber. So hopefully after today's class, you'll understand a little bit better about the two types or of categories of fiber. So let's talk about detoxification. When we um, are, the objective of detoxification is to bind chemicals like pesticides and food additives to prevent absorption and aid in elimination. So we don't want this, these chemicals hanging around and we don't want them stored in the liver. So detoxification can happen on a gentle daily basis by eating an apple a day, or <clears throat> you can do, some people like to do quarterly, detoxifications where you <clears throat> do 10 days of um, fiber and you concentrate on helping the bowel get rid of any stored so that the liver can then empty. And so there are <clears throat> certain fibers. Uh, we have Nature Sunshine has something called Clean Start and that helps to uh, eliminate uh, toxins. Some people like to do a spring cleanse 
And some people like to do a fall cleanse. <clears throat> Years ago, they used to refer to the flu as a liver cleanse because uh, the when the liver is detoxifying, sometimes you have flu-like symptoms if it's really congested. And fatty foods through the summer, you know, the spare ribs, the different types of foods that we eat in the summertime um, can accumulate if you're not doing daily detoxification, if you're not drinking enough water, and if you live in very dry climates, uh, you need extra water. And I talked about that in my aloe video about adding just a tablespoon of aloe to the water to help it get into the cells better. So when you do smoothage and roughage, you're gonna help the liver detoxify because it will absorb these toxins in the bile. And so obviously if you've had gallbladder surgery, you're gonna to need to take a supplement that assists in that because the bile duct wasn't geared for holding on to a, a lot of bile. You need bile to break down cholesterol. And so if you've gone through the gallbladder surgery and you're seeing a rise in your cholesterol numbers, then basically you need to take a, an enzyme supplement like food enzymes uh, from Nature Sunshine that helps with, <clears throat> uh, it has ox bile in it and things that will help that liver detoxify on a daily basis. So your enzymes can also be a great way for daily detoxification. And the more you get rid of toxins, it prevents against this uh, environmental toxins and is essential to um, any health program that you have and makes it so the body isn't so highly susceptible to all the challenges that are out there. So speaking of cholesterol, this um, smoothage binds cholesterol in bile and prevents it from being reabsorbed. In eliminating it instead of allowing oxidation. So cholesterol on its own is not a bad thing. In fact, we need cholesterol for our brain. Our brain uses uh, cholesterol to think, to, um, you know, you have a fat brain, it's cholesterol. It's when the cholesterol becomes oxidized and toxic that we need to get rid of it. And that happens in bile. So increasing the amount of mucilage fiber in your diet is a natural way to manage your cholesterol. And, you know, 248, they consider that a high risk for um, heart problems, but it really is the distribution of that 248. And this number, the 158 on triglycerides, to me is too high. So uh, it's really about the ratio between cholesterol and triglycerides. And that is explained in a heart health video that I produced about a year and a half ago. The so weight loss, mucilage swells to prevent a feeling uh, to provide a feeling of fullness and therefore it can assist in reducing appetite. It also helps to get some of this toxic stuff out of the body. So it slows the absorption of the fats and sugars providing a longer satiation period. So it also helps in um, the spike of blood sugar so if you're just drinking juice without the fiber, that causes the pancreas to spike. And so uh, adding that fiber, eating the apple rather than apple juice is so much healthier for you because there are so many more benefits. 
and how about immunity? So feed the friendly intestinal bacteria. These are prebiotics. Now we know the benefits of good bacteria called probiotics, but they need sugars as food. And these uh, polysaccharides are wonderful in feeding good bacteria so they can colonize and support our health. Now, many people don't think of the gut as part of the immune system, but it very much is. The smoothage helps the body ward off infections of all kinds. Uh, mucilage often contains antimicrobial compounds that protect the plant itself from viruses, bacteria, and fungus. So when you're eating an apple, part of that apple is actually prior to being taken off the tree, actually helping the immune system of the tree to ward off disease. So a lot of times the disease will go to the fruit to protect the tree. So you need to feed the roots of the tree and our intestinal system are considered our roots. And so we need to feed our roots just like the tree needs to be watered and fertilized and fed. Topical application. Now this one is a really important one. I want you to maybe take a screenshot of it or remember it because this particular weed is killed by many people using herbicides. And I wanna show you the very, very special benefits of this particular herb called plantain. Mucilant herbs are a key ingredient in poultices. Now, what's a poultice? Well, a poultice can be just taking that leaf, chewing it up and slapping it on a sting. It can be mixing it up and creating a solution that you put in a gauze square and apply that to the body. Poultices can be used in a variety of ways. And I wanna tell you a story, which I'm very, very grateful for the knowledge I've acquired over the years. And I wanna thank people like Stephen Horn, who have been my mentors, uh, all of the learning that I received through the Trinity School. Uh, for my naturopathic degree, because of this knowledge, I've been able to help so many people, and one of them is my dear husband. So it, um, I also did a drawing salve video, and I will link that in uh, the description below. This drawing salve actually pulls out toxins. It has charcoal in it and charcoal is an adsorber. So in other words, it's like a magnet that pulls out toxins. On to my husband's story. So he, we were um, in the boat and he grabbed the steering wheel and then made a bee very angry and the, the bee stung him in the, the finger. And so, you know, instinct and he's rubbing it like crazy. And I know that the thing you want to do with any kind of bite or sting is contain it. You don't want to spread it through the bloodstream. But he was suffering with it and he was dealing with it the best he knew how. So when we got home, uh, he agreed to do a soak and we got a deep bowl, filled it with water. I went out and I picked three or four plantain leaves, put them in my little seed uh, chopper with some water and mixed it up, broke it up and allowed a lot of that mucilage to go into the water. I put that in the bowl with a half a cup of Epsom salts and we swished it around and um, put in a few ice cubes. Of course, it was very, very cold, but it was soothing because his hand was so inflamed and stung. By this time, the 
whole hand was uh, swollen. And so we did this uh, several applications and within a few days, the whole hand had uh, decreased, was back to normal. You could see where the bee had stung him. There was a puncture or wound where the bee had stung him. So I encourage you to <laughs> honor your weeds. They're there for a purpose. Oh, maybe you wanna get rid of some, but recognize that weeds can be our friends. Every Tuesday, I do a class that lasts about 20 minutes and I teach about the benefits of sometimes weeds, sometimes food that has nutrition and sometimes herbs. So look into those classes. I encourage you to learn about these wonderful healing benefits that are all around us and they're actually for free. So we didn't have to go to the doctor with this bee sting. We were able to take care of it very, very effectively. And you know, by the time you get in to see a doctor, it the swelling could have gone into his whole arm. So uh, taking care of things as quickly as you can is really a benefit. And this healing cooling bath can be done in either the hands or the feet, uh, anything that is inflamed and stinging uh, where you would want to use an ice pack, you could use this. So <clears throat> a lot of herbs are uh, beneficial. Now there's also a benefit in a warm bath that uh, if you have like a chronic pain, like arthritis, those type of things, sometimes doing a warm tepid bath is a better. You can add ginger to keep it warm, uh, lavender, uh, any of these warming herbs can be a uh, benefit. You can also add essential oils to these, but doing foot or hand soaks can get through to the whole body and I have found them to be extremely beneficial. But let's talk a little bit about this wonder weed called plantain. And this is a picture of the video I did on plantain and uh, you can find the link in my YouTube channel. This is uh, aloe vera. And aloe vera is a wonderful plant uh, in my area in Michigan. It doesn't grow outside year around, so you can grow it inside. And it is recommended to put it in kind of a clay pot. The top can end up being quite heavy and in a plastic pot uh, could tip over. And so the recommendation is using a heavy pot for aloe. So it is a wonderful gel. Uh, you would skin the outside to remove the uh, thorns, fillet it and scoop out the gel. Uh, and you could apply that right to burns. I like to add lavender because it is such a wonderful uh, combination that can help heal burns. And it um, has been used for kitchen burns and even radiation burns. Um, so it relieves pain and speeds healing. So in other words, you're not just taking a pain medication, you're actually assisting the body to help with the healing process. So it's helpful for any skin damage or irritation where the skin is dry, red, and irritated. In, in my uh, presentation on aloe, I talk about the uh, psoriasis and dermatitis and different skin lesions that it can help with. So when you drink it, inflammatory bowel disorders, you start very slowly and add just a little bit. Now, aloe juice, that means you just take a tiny bit of the gel. Some people will use the outer part as well, but that is where most of the laxative part is. And if you need that to 
help with the elimination, it would make a fairly good bowel softener, stool softener, and help with the bowels. So it uh, the inside reduces inflammation and irritation of the mucous membranes of the mouth, sinuses, and digestive tract. So if you have mouth sores, you could take a little bit of the aloe, put it in some warm water, swish it around in your mouth, let it sit there for maybe 10 minutes if you can, and then you could swallow it and help with the whole digestive system. So mouth sores are generally a key to tell you that mm, perhaps there's too much acidity going on and that uh, you need to calm the acidity. And this is one way of doing it, not taking Tums, okay? <laughs> so helpful for inflammatory bowel disorders such as ulcerations, colitis, gastritis, and Crohn's disease. So gut health, you know, gut health is a popular thing. Aloe has um, been shown to be of huge benefit to improve digestion and absorption. It reduces bowel toxicity. You can add it to a smoothie uh, or even to bone broth. It would be very beneficial for the healing of the gut. So it doesn't reduce the benefit if you add it to anything. So in other words, it's not a thing where you have to take a spoonful of it. You can add it to a lot of different things. Uh, you can even add it to soup and uh, people wouldn't even know that uh, aloe was in the soup. It would just be part of the blend of uh, flavors. So it reduces yeast and harmful bacteria in the gut and um, there is a wonderful whole leaf aloe that Nature Sunshine has that I love. And I will link that as well as the aloe vera gel and a 25% discount when you use that link. So it helps with the immune system, it reduces chronic inflammatory disease, balances immune function in autoimmune disease, and it has been helpful for rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, lupus, HIV, Epstein-Barr. These are all things that the medical community struggles with, and their thing is steroids. Now, steroids have a huge side effect uh, there are lots of issues with taking steroids. And these are things that are chronic. So it's, you know, if, if you need to take steroid for, you know, maybe a short period of time for some acute problem, that's one thing. But to take it on a consistent basis is really detrimental. And can you have to weigh the benefits versus the side effects. Now, when you do um, chew aloe, you actually cut this off. You take a knife and you just slice this part off on both sides. And then, then you take your knife and you fillet it open. And that's when you can just scoop out the gel. Or you can take a little bit of the green, depending on what you want to experiment with. So it is of um, very, very um, huge benefit. Now, I grow comfrey. I love comfrey. There has been issues with comfrey in the past where people will um, say that it's toxic. It's, you know, it, it has gotten a bad, bad rap. And that's really, really unfortunate. I feel that there is so much misinformation about herbs and the benefits of herbs and even weeds that has scared people off. And I feel because of their history, most of these have been used for hundreds, even thousands of years. Some of them are written in hieroglyphics and Greek manuals. And so it's, the people depended on this as their medicine years ago, before the pharmaceutical industry took over and became the 
be all and end all. Uh, you know, it's like I'm in my late seventies and people in my age group should be taking seven to eight medications um, a day. I don't take any. I don't, I don't feel that medications are the answer. And most times they do not assist the body in healing. Herbs and weeds and those type of things, food is your medicine. So I love comfrey. I dry comfrey. I um, use it. I chop it up, put it with water, make a comfrey tea fertilizer. Um, you can uh, chop it up, dried comfrey. Uh, with raspberry leaves and mint makes a wonderful tea for women's health. I mean, it, the list is unbelievable in this. So it is a misunderstood herb, but most gardeners uh, love it. So it is a nourishing remedy. It's mucilaginous. It has this fuzzy leaf and um, in some cases can feel quite picky. Uh, there are some people that can't harvest it without wearing gloves. Um, I've not found that to be an irritant. Um, I just will capture a whole bunch of it, cut it off, pull off the leaves, dry it. It air dries uh, overnight, basically will get crunchy, uh, thoroughly air dry, it takes a little bit longer, especially when you have 90% humidity, but it can uh, air dry within 48 hours. And I use the flowers and the leaves to make many remedies. I have lots of videos on my YouTube channel talking about comfrey and adding it to oil to make a wonderful salve. Um, I've <clears throat> dried it to make teas. Um, it also is very beneficial to put into a tea ball, make a uh, um, hot tea, let it steep for about 20 minutes and pour that tea into a bath and it can ease different joint pains. It's very moisturizing and can be absorbed very quickly into the skin and then taken up by the body. So it's a wonderful, it's high in calcium. So it helps with healing bone, uh, it, chromium, magnesium, potassium, selenium and silicon, which makes that slippery feel, uh, which the knees need a lot. Uh, I've made poultices with comfrey. Uh, I can't, I, they're, they, I could expound on comfrey for an hour. So it is a wonderful, wonderful herb. And I urge everybody to grow it. Now, the thing with comfrey is that it has a huge taproot. So when you plant it, don't think about moving it because no matter what you do, you'll have comfrey. So make sure that where you plant it, you want it. And a lot of times it will go under and create another, but it isn't invasive like mint is. It uh, is totally controllable and it can be used in so many different things. So I, I love it. It's high in vitamin C, A, niacin, riboflavin, and um, yeah, learn more about comfrey. So as a tissue healer, it contains elantoin, which encourages cell growth. Now, anything that actually helps cells to multiply or grow healthier is going to benefit health. So can um, speed the healing of wounds, burns. Now there is a caveat that you do not want to use comfrey on a deep wound because the skin part will heal faster than the wound. And you, you want it to heal from the deep wound to the exterior. And in that case, comfrey tea would be it because that way you'd be assisting the cell production of the healing of that deep cut 
and then you can start using the poultices. But having a lotion like this on hand for minor cuts and injuries, it's amazing. It really is. Uh, it can be a lot of fun. You can have a couple of friends get together and put some lavender in it and make it um, very, very fun. It's great for puncture wounds. It can um, help deep. Now, the puncture wound would be just a small, you know, like abrasion, not a deep wound. Um, I've actually put it on a sore that like if I'm cutting back my roses and I get punctured, I actually will put some of this lotion on it, but I make sure I rub, 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 rub so that the tissues underneath uh, the, the very beginning of the wound actually get the benefit of this. So internally, uh, if you choose to use comfrey internally, make a tea from the leaves and mix with lemon or uh, lemon balm or mint or both. Uh, raspberry leaves, like I said, is wonderful. Use for a limited period of time, uh, two to six weeks. Basically through the winter is a great time. Uh, avoid if there is any history of liver problems. Now that's put in because the FDA, um, the root itself is, uh, you don't find the root available. You can find teas with comfrey now, but the FDA actually did a moratorium and they cut comfrey out of all of our recipes for the longest period of time because of, you know, an occasional liver problem. Um, but most of the time it's because the liver is quite damaged and what Comfrey was initiating was a liver cleanse and these people got sick. And so, <laughs> well, they, they deserve to get sick because they need to make sure that their, their uh, liver is cleansed and that they're not eating junky food. So, uh, and of course, it's always recommended not to do during pregnancy or nursing. But let me tell you, right after that baby is born, doing a comfrey poultice, oh, it's so wonderful, so healing. So internal uses of comfrey tea for great for broken bones, sprains, torn ligaments, um, healing damaged lung tissue in the COPD, uh, healing intestinal inflammation and leaky gut. It is wonderful. You can add a little bit of peppermint to it. And um, there we used to have a wonderful remedy called comfrey and pepsin. And it's been replaced by marshmallow, which we'll talk about in just a minute. But it's a possible uh, A to arthritis, uh, osteoarthritis, because of it assisting with bone health so wonderfully. So here's marshmallow. It's a gorgeous uh, flower. Um, it also has this fuzzy type leaf. The leaf structure itself is different. It's serrated. And whereas the comfrey leaf is rather on the smooth side, um, the root is where the marshmallow treat came from. Uh, it has a substance that can be mixed with sugar and made into uh, marshmallows. So that's where marshmallow came from. Nowadays, there's not a bit a marshmallow plant in marshmallows, so you won't get it in s'mores. So it is a nourishing mild food. Actually, people will uh, take the top tender leaves and add them to salads. It's been uh, used as a food since the time of the Bible. In, it's written in the recorded in the book of Job. So it um, other marshmallow family plants include okra. Now, if you've ever eaten cooked okra, you do know the mucilaginous <laughs> of okra. Um, hollyhocks is another plant, uh, common mallow hibiscus and cotton. Uh, I've made hibiscus tea. It is a wonderful tea. I've only made hibiscus tea from the 
ornamental plant and not the perennial. Right now, my perennial hibiscus are in full bloom and absolutely gorgeous. These are the ones that are like the size of a head and um, are just amazing. They're just so beautiful. So marshmallow root is a membrane soother. So soothing, moistening, and anti-inflammatory to the mucous membranes of the digestive, respiratory, and urinary system. It's helpful for ulcers, colitis, and leaky gut syndrome. And a lot of times we'll add it with slippery elm. It aids dry hacking cough uh, when you add licorice and mullein. Um, and it's helpful for burning, scalding, irritation. And in that, you can add corn soap. And yes, that stuff that you throw away <laughs> is a beneficial herb. So it is not fun to clean. And so unfortunately, there are a lot of manufacturers that will accept an amount of dirt not nature sunshine. Nature sunshine is extremely particular about dirt in their product and they will not allow any dirt in their product. So a word from our sponsor is this wonderful recipe of marshmallow and fenugreek. It is a super support for digestion, respiratory system, and wherever you need soothing. Um, there is a link in the description below for a coupon worth 25% off. This particular also has slippery elm in it. And we mentioned that briefly, the benefits of slippery elm are um, amazing. So marshmallow has a demulcent property while fenugreek possesses mucilaginous compounds. Slippery elm is also mucilaginous and supports delicate body tissues. So that if you're not interested in doing <laughs> harvesting or foraging, then this would be the way to go. And if you wanna make a tea, you still can open the capsule and make a tea out of it. So, uh, or to make a poultice. So topical applications, um, every herbal medicine chest should have the, uh, marshmallow in it. It's helpful for skin irritations involving redness and swelling of tissue, helps reduce swelling, aids wound healing, can be used on burns from <clears throat> heat or acidic or alkaline um, chemicals. So uh, it is very, very beneficial to make a, like a poultice out of this particular uh, root. Now, nopal is a, a desert plant, and it has a long history of supporting and helping with blood sugar problems. Uh, some specialty stores will sell the cactus stem. Uh, again, it would be the same thing as um, aloe only the thorns are not on just the exterior, they are everywhere on this particular stem and you have to scrape them off to use the plant. And it is used in a lot of um, uh, south, uh, Southwestern dishes and the, they're edible, um, but you gotta make sure that you remove these nettles cause they can irritate the throat or the fingers. <laughs> so uh, it contains antioxidants and antimicrobial compounds, which make it uh, anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial. The way I like to take nopal is through nature sunshine. <laughs> so, uh, it's helpful for type 2 diabetes, has a very low glycemic index, has helped decrease blood sugar by 17 to 46 percent in clinical trials. So that is a wonderful um, remedy um, if you don't want to go by way of medication and your doctor is okay with um, making sure that your blood sugar is staying at a good percent or dropping. 
Um, it also helps heal the GI tract and promote healthy gut flora. So it has a lot of advantages to helping. Again, the psyllium and plantain, that this is the same thing as broadleaf. Uh, the difference is, is psyllium, when they talk about it, uh, this is the seed itself. Uh, it's kind of hard to harvest. Um, you, know, you know, you have to wait till it's dry and then pull it off the thing. There's certain processing things that have to occur, but it is highly mus mucilaginous, one of the most mucilaginous herbs available. It absorbs many times its own weight in water. Uh, in fact, if you put a little bit of psyllium seed or hull in a glass of water, you can actually see it absorb. And after a small period of time, you're actually looking at a pudding. It, um, it actually can bulk up that and it makes a wonderful stool bulkener. So it comes from the seeds of spe spe special uh, plantains that are native to India. Uh, some people will use the seeds in the ones that they see, but we don't really know whether those are really health benefiting or if they are irritating. So seeds and husks or hulls of the seeds are both used as over-the-county bulk laxatives. You'll see that in many of the preparations that are called bulk la laxatives. I prefer, again, to have it all done for me. <laughs> and um, psyllium hulse combination is a wonderful way. It again has the apple pectin, opran, and guar gum to assist. So it has all of the both <clears throat> roughage and smoothage that can assist with um, helping with constipation or diarrhea and uh, making sure that you're drinking enough water with it. So like I mix it, uh, the best way to do is to create like a little tornado in your glass. So you put, um, I like to add just a tablespoon or so of uh, juice and then uh, the rest with water, put my, uh, there's a scoop that comes with it, put your scoop of psyllium hulls in it, swirl it around until you create this vortex and then drink it down. Uh, do not leave it sit there because you want that bulking to occur in the large intestine and not in the glass that you're eating from. Now, the leaves of the plantain, we've talked about them. They're slightly mucilaginous. There's um, a slightly astringent. They have a mild sou sour flavor. When you're picking it up, chewing it, and putting it on a mosquito bite, it really doesn't have a whole lot of flavor, just tastes green. Um, crushed fresh plantain leaves make an excellent poultice for many types of injuries. And I have applied this to mosquito bites and different kinds of stings and burns. Um, this is the leaf that my husband uh, used in his soak. Um, the one that we have in Michigan is a rounder leaf. Uh, this is found more in the uh, Southwest area. Um, so I've not seen the uh, longer variety, but they do the same thing. So it is a wonderful, wonderful herb uh, internally. It can be used to help heal ulcers, inflammatory bowel disorders and leaky gut syndrome. And it is um, the seeds of an uh, ordinary plantain are a mild laxative, but are difficult to harvest. So you basically, now I've, I've not seen it look like this. The one I see is a long stem of seeds and I would prefer to buy it. Now, slippery elm bark is a fabulous, fabulous herb. I love it. It kept, um, it was credited with saving George Washington's starving army. The Indians showed them how to make a porridge out of uh, stripping the uh, inner bark of the, the elm trees and considered slippery elm because it was so mucilaginous 
and it fed them and kept them satisfied. So it was a nourishing food that is completely safe for anyone, including young children. Slippery Elm has been added to um, a baby's formula or breast milk to help keep them more satisfied. It has been used for children that are a failure to thrive. And it is um, wonderful for somebody who is debilitated and um, cannot gain weight. Um, it's so very wonderfully nourishing. So it contains uh, nutrients to aid in tissue healing. The problem is, is that there's a disease that has wiped out many of our large slippery elm trees. And so um, it is slightly endangered. So make sure that you're buying from a trusted source that isn't killing the trees. Um, there is a way that you harvest it off of the branches and not the trunk uh, to not kill the tree, but to make sure that the tree survives the wonderful um, benefits it gives off. Uh, as a children's um, remedy. Now it doesn't mix well with, it's one of those non-absorbable type fibers. And so if you mix it with hot liquids, you'll have a better experience. Uh, I have mixed it with applesauce, but it's, it's not easy. Um, also applesauce and yogurt mixed um, as, as a cereal, it really is uh, a wonderful, mild thing to help with children who are um, not doing well and need more nourishment. So it has a mild, pleasant taste. Most children don't know it's there. Um, it has helped infants with um, diarrhea um, and you can't stop the diarrhea because it, it the slippery elm can actually soothe the digestive tract and stop it. Um, there have been also people who have used it as a dusting powder um, for diaper rash. So, um, but it's a great intestinal remedy and helpful for inflammatory bowel disorders like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Now on a range, um, slippery elm is uh, less abrasive than psyllium. So if you are having any trouble with psyllium, then the next step would be slippery elm. And then if for some reason, slippery elm seemed to be, then it would be marshmallow. Uh, marshmallow root is even more mucilant than slippery elm. And a lot of people will use it as a combination like that um, marshmallow fenugreek is a great way to help with um, supporting the intestinal system. As a topical, it's one of the very best herbs to use as a base for poultices. Um, now, because of it's endangered until the trees start to get healthier, I have sought after other things for um, using in poultices. Now, the way that you can identify the slippery or the elm is it's, it's offset. Now the leaf is higher on one end. So in other words, it doesn't equalize like you would think the leaf would go here, but uh, elm has this one side higher than the other on the stem. So that's one identifying feature and I've mixed this with white oak bark um, for a um, pulling for an abscess, um, made a wad of it and put it where the abscess is to help pull some of the toxins out, um, sort of like a chewing tobacco type of thing, uh, a, a plug of it in there. And it has been very beneficial for that. I've, like I said, made a, um, uh, drawing shab video with uh, charcoal um, for spider bites or any kind of a, a bite. So I hope that you now know the two basic kinds of fiber 
um, and that you will ad adopt the word smoothage. <laughs> Maybe you can uh, create a dictionary uh, referral for it, but we know about roughage and um, roughage is that undigestible fiber. Smoothage is the digestible fiber that we, um, the mucilant, the, the um, rich, uh, plump part of the fruit. And <clears throat> for an orange, it would be the flesh. This pith is not not edible, basically, it's very tart. And then you have the peel. So like I made orange marmalade and what you have to do is you have to take the peel, you have to eliminate the pith and use the flesh, oh, sorry, <laughs> and go back to, um, and not use the seeds. So um, I hope this video was beneficial that you've learned a lot about how beneficial fiber can be in your diet. I wanna thank you. Please give me a thumbs up, comment, uh, share with other people so that they can understand the benefits of herbs and uh, subscribe. And um, this is Dr. Mary for the health of it. Okay. Hi, Mary. Hi. So were there any questions on the class or did you? No, not for me, except that I couldn't see any of the slides because they were small down in the corner. I'm not sure if you shared your screen. I sent you a note. Oh. Um. Yeah, I don't answer my phone, so I wouldn't turn. I'll have to look at it in the preview. It was large on my screen, so I don't know why it would be small in the corner. So what happened that it um, went away right at the end? And then you got it back. Oh, I, I clicked on the, <laughs> I clicked on it mistakenly. So it's really funny, I can see my, um, static picture in the corner right now, and yeah. I can see large. And you can see what? I can see you large. Yeah, that's what I see. So I don't understand how the slides weren't available to you. So <laughs> hopefully uh, it didn't record that way. <laughs> Otherwise, I may have to do the class again <clears throat> to post it. So what are you going to do on this hot weekend? I'm meeting up with two of my sisters, and we're going to go to a palmistry class this afternoon. Oh, that's right. Yeah. This should be interesting. I've never met this person who did this class. I have a friend who does palmistry, and when she read my palm, it was really, really right on. Oh. So, I don't know. It'll be just interesting. Yeah. It's only $10, so. Yeah. Sarah said she went to a taco festival last weekend <clears throat> down on Andersonville Road at the fairground there, where they have the 4-H fair. Where is that at? It must oh, be down you just take, take Andersonville Road until it, it pass, basically ends and the fairgrounds is on the, on the left. Okay, I've never gone that way. Yeah. It's almost to Davisburg. So. Well, hopefully she had fun. She did. Are um, you still recording? What was that? I still have a recording button in the corner. <laughs>